This is episode 680, and today we're going to be talking about harnessing the power of positive psychology. You know, so in today's episode, we're going to kind of take a deep dive into the transformative world of positive psychology. Um, This isn't just about thinking happy thoughts. It's about harnessing powerful principles that can elevate your mental strength and ignite your warrior spirit. Um, Whether you're facing personal challenges, striving for professional success, or seeking a more fulfilling life, the strategies we're going to discuss, strength finding, gratitude, optimism, are the keys to unlocking a resilient and empowering mindset. And I often use positive psychology or aspects of positive psychology in my coaching because it does help support the development of mental strength, grit, resilience, um, all of that. So um, this is really great information. So I hope you're going to take some notes or just Go back to the website when I'm done and look at the notes there. But let's understand what this really is. So positive psychology, it's a field that was pioneered by Dr. Martin Selgeman, and it shifts a focus from what's wrong with us to what's right with us. Traditional psychology would say, okay, what are the issues? What's the problem? What's going on? And it would continually focus on the things that are wrong with us. And the results weren't that spectacular. Well, what Dr. Selgeman um, realized that by focusing on what's right with us, we will develop more things that are right with us so that right, what's working right with us will expand. And it's been embraced by corporations, individuals, athletes and stuff, Uh, military. Actually, he worked with the military in developing some resilience plans with this. But so positive psychology is about leveraging our strengths, right? fostering gratitude, and cultivating optimism, not just to survive, but we want to thrive. And there's this escalation of you know, surviving and thriving kind of Maslow's hierarchy. But when we embrace the concepts of positive psychology, use them regularly, we will feel that difference from surviving to thriving. You know, unlike traditional psychology, which often concentrates on treating mental illness, positive psychology emphasizes on building a positive emotion and traits to enhance overall well-being. And isn't that one of the big key words these days is well-being? And it's not just drinking water and eating right, right? It's what we look at. It's, it's leveraging our strengths, gratitude, and those aspects of positive psychology. So let's take a look at number one, identifying your strengths, right? The first principle of positive psychology is strength finding. You know, every individual possesses unique strengths, characteristics, and skills that come naturally and can be honed to achieve excellence. There's two places that I use with my coaching. One is the Clifton Strength Finders, and that be more of a physical, you know, like, what are you good at? type stuff. And the strengths can be negotiation, it can be analytical thinking, but that that is a great place to start from that. From a more um, character perspective, your Virtues in Action, the VIA Institute, um, also is a great place to go to get your virtues. Now, your virtues are part of who you are. They're not your values. Your character strengths uh, from Clifton are those things that you would use at work and would use maybe in your daily activities where the virtues are part of who you are. But you, my key, when I work with clients, we definitely identify values, virtues, and strengths so that they can leverage those consciously every day and improve the results that they're getting. And the process, right, this all begins with self-discovery and the three tools that I listed, you know, values, virtues, and strengths can help tremendously. And this is why it's so important to have a coach because a coach can help you not interpret the findings, but help you embrace those and see how you can include them in your everyday life. So now we're going to move on to gratitude. Why does gratitude matter, right? Gratitude is more important than a fleeting feeling like, oh, I'm so happy today. I saw a beautiful 
sunset, whatever. And those things can be true, but you know, it's a powerful practice that reshapes your mental landscape. You know, by focusing on what you have rather than what you lack, you cultivate a positive mindset that can buffer against stress and adversity. And it's as simple as that. You know, you, we have, you know, a cup of coffee. We go, man, I wish I had a Starbucks. Well, we're focusing on what we don't have as opposed to being grateful for what we do have. And we've been programmed through media, through marketing, through whatever to want more, 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 never be happy with what we have. And this can lead to, you know, um, all suffering comes from attachment, the Dalai Lama or Buddha, one of the two said, right? So when we get attached to what we want more and more, we create the suffering. But with gratitude is we see what we have, we're happy with what we have. Yes, we can desire more and other things, but we don't want to des have that desire sacrifice our gratitude of what we have right now. So acknowledging what we have, our health, our eyes, our hearing, the beautiful sky, the weather, where we're living, all of it we want to start acknowledging every day. And that can be done either first thing in the morning when you wake up, be grateful for waking up, be grateful for breathing, or you can actually do kind of like a, a rundown list at the end of the day, four things you're grateful for, or three things you're grateful for. And a lot of folks have a challenge keeping to start a journal because they think it needs to be very in depth and write these philosophical paragraphs. Well. We just want to start with, if you haven't done a journal, a gratitude journal, just start with three things. Today's date, three things I'm grateful for. The weather, my car, and my eyesight. That's it. If you can't think of three things, think of one thing and three reasons why you're grateful for it. But as you continue to acknowledge these, this gratitude, you will eventually start expressing it more and more and more. But to put yourself under the uh, uh, under the assumption that you have to write these profound paragraphs at the end of each day is setting yourself up for failure. So my recommendation is somewhere between dinner and bed, sit down for five minutes, write down three things you, you're grateful for, and just don't write them down and forget. Just spend some mindful time and think, hmm, wow, I really am grateful for my car because it got me to work, the grocery store, et cetera, even though it may not be the latest and greatest. But take your time, go through that, and start to see how you appreciate more things in life, which then will start turning your positive mindset. Right Now let's look at understanding optimism. Right, Optimism isn't about ignoring life's difficulties. It's not about Pollyanna or rose color glasses. It's about maintaining a hopeful outlook and seeing challenges as opportunities for our growth, right? This mindset can significantly impact your mental strength, helping you to persist in the face of adversity, right? And hope itself has been studied quite vigorously. And hope basically is that we believe that tomorrow, whether it's tomorrow the day or tomorrow the week, but we believe that tomorrow is going to be better than today. We have a plan for making that happen, and we are responsible for that plan. So those are the three components of hope, which then can help foster that optimism. Like, hey, I, I know tomorrow is going to be better because here's my plan, and it's up to me to do it, so I'm in control of it. And when we can start being hopeful and again things happen today and we we understand that there's challenges but then we can look at those cha the challenges as how is it helping me improve as a dad a mom a boss a teacher you know whatever that is the challenges can help us improve and with optimism you're going okay here's a lesson here this is wonderful it might have sucked it might have been painful there's no doubt about it we're not going to go oh that was enjoyable you know, if you go bankrupt, but what we can do is with, with that is look at it. Okay. What did I learn? So that means tomorrow will be better than today. And that's where the hope outlook comes in, which is all part of optimism. So let's look at some tips about how to integrate positive psychology into your daily life, right? We talked about this, a morning routine. 
Start your day with a routine that includes gratitude, journaling, and setting positive intentions. So it's one thing to be grateful for what we have, and then we want to set the intention for the day. Um, and Abraham Hicks talks about this a lot, and Seth, um, in her, his books talk about this a lot too. But it's setting the positive intention. What do you want? How do you want your day to go? I want it to go smooth, happy. I want to get things done. I'm effective. I'm efficient. Even just setting those positive attentions, writing them down, is a start to a great morning routine. And then number two, we want to look at strength-based activities. Again, this could be your virtues or this could be your character strengths, either one. So plan your day around tasks that allow you to use these strengths. So if your strength is analytical thinking from the Gallup Institute, you would go, okay, today I'm going to really take time. I have a project. I'm going to do some analytical thinking on that. Um, if one of your virtues is humor, you can say, okay, it's going to be a rough day at work. How can I use humor to make this a little bit lighter? But when you purposely put your attention on these things, then you can exercise them. Then you'll be basically embracing this positive psychology. Um, then mindful reflection, right? At the end of the day with reflecting on what went well and what you're looking forward to, to, to tomorrow. And we, we want to keep, again, the whole concept of positive psychology is focusing on what's working, knowing that when we focus on what works, it's going to expand. And so we look at the day, we look at, wow, this was really a great day because this one thing happened, this, 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 and tomorrow is even going to be a better day because I'm aware of these things and I'm going to bring them into tomorrow. So those are three really very easy tips to start down the road of positive psychology. So just keep in mind, harnessing the power of positive psychology is a journey of self-discovery and transformation. This is why a coach's hand is very helpful because they can walk with you on this journey. You know, by focusing on your strengths, cultivating gratitude and nurturing optimism, you can enhance your mental strength and embrace a warrior spirit that stands resilient in the face of life's challenges. Pretty cool, right? And so start today. Watch as these principles elevate your mindset and empower you to not just survive, but thrive. So if you want to see the show notes on this podcast, you can visit warriormindcoach.com. While you're over there, you can find some more useful information in the form of blog posts and other podcasts. And you'll see a button there on how to contact me for a breakthrough session. Since you'll be on the internet, please follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest under Warrior Mind Coach.